signage, uh, in particular neon, but so the signage will be simple, just uh, block lettering <coughs> going across. As you can see in some of these pictures here, this is how the facade will probably be inside the establishment will look. Um, there's the logo, then you'll see um, everything in the to-go containers are all labeled, which is according to city code, which is all labeled. Um, and the other so the other issue we have to do, I believe we have to, we haven't applied yet for a particular license, so we haven't applied for a particular license at this time, but we do have a hearing date of April the 9th for uh, zoning at the uh, DEA. And I'm more than happy to address any questions and concerns, but, but I think I addressed everything. Oh, I think one last thing actually, which is very important, which we heard uh, City Councilor Allowed to uh, Royal talk about jobs. Um, just talking with uh, Tom real quick, in terms of jobs, their locations do generate approximately 40 jobs per, per year for, uh, for, for our youth in each of the communities that they're located in. Thank you. Uh, any butters here uh, want to speak? David, want to speak? Yeah, hi. Uh, I'm Mark Rodson. I'm at 287 Hanover. How are you? I'm good. And if you subtract two from that, exactly where you guys are. I had no exactly something big building there. Yeah, right, yeah, exactly. Um, love your product. Thank you. Love the yogurt. Um, speaking for the building, we do have concerns about the hours. Um, it's an interesting sort of economic situation. The later sort of a snack place is open, the more people it attracts because there just aren't that many options in the neighborhood and in the city. So it, it tends to draw tons of people the later it's open. So that's a that's definitely a concern for us as far as like noise and you know, bites. You know, I know everyone in the room has kind of seen that happen. Um, you know, you go out drinking, you go to Pink Berry, you fight. That's why we're certainly committed to the good neighbor agreement with the, the closing hours. Like I said, in the winter months, it's you know usually cold or early. So I mean, like ten. yeah, by ten. But in the summer nights, where the, especially on the weekends, we love to stay open to the midnight hour. Okay. I only have two other things I'm going to talk about. Very I'd like small, to ask a very small percentage of our business on, on Newbury Street or or Harvard Square is done after ten thirty. Very small. I mean, it's, it, the percentage wise is probably yeah, it's kind of we don't intend that this is a location that would be really what we talked about is a destination spot that people are gonna come into the north end to specifically come to Pink Berry. Uh, we get a lot of foot traffic with a lot of tourists, a lot of people come in our neighborhood to pick up with that foot traffic that walks on by but so uh, Tom to echo what Tom and Ted just said by ten o'clock when it's really kind of quiet at the restaurants are kind of closing down uh, and this store is pretty 700 square feet. I mean, not that it's a lot, pretty deep, so they can, you know, have some people, you know, inside of it. So we won't be people outside, hopefully, if they're, they would love to see a line out there. You know what I mean? If they're ever out, they feel weird that there might be a problem. Yeah, because that was my second question. Do you guys have a queue in strategy as far as yeah, lines? We, we do at every store. I mean, you know, in, in this time of year, it's obviously never not an issue at all. Sometimes in the summer, uh, you know, it, it's only an issue at um, we have a couple, one store, Harvard Square in particular, the, where the front the front is small, it's half the size of this, and sometimes the line filters out the door, but never more than five or six feet. So. You know, Newbury Street, it all queues, which is about, which is similar to the, like this. It all queues right <coughs> up, perfectly, even when it's, you know, what, what I would say crowded. Yeah. Okay. Crowded for us might be, you know, 10 or 12 people in line. Yeah. Okay. And then, is there an outdoor seating plan? No. no. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then my final, sorry, one more question. So the final question is, people tend to congregate on our, on our scoop and leave stuff 
you know, do you have a strategy for sort of controlling the area so as far as I, um, I spoke to um, speaking with them and telling them that's an issue that I did I, I know someone who lives in the building and uh, had a conversation with a young lady and explained that concern and both of them and they certainly their employees would be out there and certainly the, all the products are gonna be labeled and they don't want to be a bad be considered a bad neighbor. So be out there, clean it out there, they're gonna maintain it and purchase that big belly and they're the ones that are gonna have to maintain it. So then the bank room right there, they, you know, they, they know that's gonna be a concern because I brought that to the bank. Um Rosemary McCall on uh, Prince Street. Right at that very same place is modern pastry. There's always a huge line going in there, and I've never seen any problem connected with the line. I wouldn't yeah. think that this would create anything uh, more than that. No, I think the concern was just kind of blockage the doorway, and, and well, it's a residential they, building. They right, no, and I understand, and we, we hope that it doesn't cause a problem. Yeah. Any other questions? Are you commit to no tables or chairs, not even any benches on the sidewalk, and no sidewalk signs whatsoever. Correct. Okay. Uh, Timber on Spring Street. What do you guys plan on giving back to the neighborhood? Um, yeah, the this is a, a yeah. franchise coming into the neighborhood. It, it's traditionally all local businesses. Um, and if you look at the franchises in the neighborhood now, they don't do a whole lot for the neighborhood. They don't sponsor teams. They don't sponsor community groups. You know, they, they don't do that sort of thing. It's all the local businesses that do that. Do you guys plan on being part of the community, or do you plan on just being here for business? Yeah, I, I, I think first, you know, the, the best way to explain this is, you know, when, when, you're, when we refer to a franchise, I mean, I, even I, as, a, as the owner of, of some think very stores, I think of McDonald's, and I think of Dunkin' Donuts, and, I, and you know, we're, we're local guys. But um, you're still, I mean, it's a franchise. It's it's a, a, no, I, I understand that. I understand. That. It's, it's a franchise. We pay a fee to a company in California. We're, we're the only developer of, the, of Pink Berry in this entire area, in the entire region. So we're the only ones. We don't have a lot of stores. We're, we're local. I, I live in Swamp Scott. I mean, you know, this was my friend and I decided, hey, we really like this stuff. How can we how can we sell it and we realize it's a franchise? So in, in that sense, it is a franchise. In, in the sense of, is there going to be a pink berry on every single corner? And, you know, no, it's not because we're, we're in. But, you know, we, we do get involved. We, you know, we're, uh, I personally give to a lot of charities. I mean, and specifically to the North End, you know, when we're, if we're asked to participate in things, we will do it. Right. And, so what are some of the things that you've done in the neighborhoods you're currently in? In the neighborhoods we're currently in, yeah. well, we, we participate in the Harvard Square Business Association. I mean, it, it's that doesn't. I, I, I don't really understand the question. I mean, what? Yeah, what? Well, what if, you, if you drive through the I North End in the summertime station. and you see the feasts, you see that the local businesses sponsor feasts. They give money to the to the community but groups. Well, what I'll, how I'll answer that is one of the Not first yet. questions when I first met Tom and Ted. The first thing is said. What are, the, what are the groups around? What are the sporting activities in the neighborhood? What are the groups around here? How can we contribute? I mean, I think that's that's your question, and that was specifically asked. So, if the answer the question, that's what he's asking. Is, yeah, and I've talked to him about what's here in the neighborhood. You know, we have soccer, we have little league baseball, we we now have hockey, we have basketball, we have the Nazaro Center that was in and here, youth center. I talked to him about it. Have we begun to contribute? No, we we was Obviously, as you can see, we're at the beginning, but we intend to. Yeah. Well, that's actually yeah. what they do right. in other neighborhoods. Right. I mean, we have one in Harvard, we <coughs> have one in Back Bay. You could be doing these types of things already. And so my question is, are you? And, and, we, and we do with, you know, we have, uh, <coughs> just to your point, we are sponsoring uh, local softball teams. We get involved with local schools. We put ads in playbills or, or whatever they're doing uh, locally. Almost anybody who comes in uh, and requests something, whether it's time or product or, or money, we're participating locally. Because that's our marketing strategy. It's, it's not billboards and, and such. It's local store sort of marketing and getting involved. <coughs> aside from the fact that we hire over about 40 or 50 people. Those uh, full time jobs, part time jobs? Both. 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 Uh, I, I'd also say that if you if you do look at the Pinkberry website, there is a there is a, uh, a fundraising request 
and we do a lot of them. And they, they run through the stores. Uh, a, a big percentage of everything that comes through the fundraiser into the store goes back to that charity. So we do, you know, you're asking for specifics, but this, I mean, we probably do maybe 100 a year, maybe more. Um, you know, some of them raise $50 and some of them raise, you know, significantly more. A lot of those fundraisers we offer it as a service, but the fundraisers are really, a lot of those are driven by the people that request them. They, you know, they bring people to the store and we donate, pro, we donate <coughs> a good portion of the proceeds back to that chair. Okay. Uh, we've got to move on. There's nothing else. And uh, so, uh, can we have a motion to vote yes or no on this? Sure. Thank you. Uh, second? Thank you. Okay, we're using the yellow ballot. You support the circle of support if you don't. So we'll write a letter and say, so, 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 so,